insecurity in Nigeria is the most talked about issue today, as terrorists are gradually taking over every corner of the country. They have displayed their boldness in numerous ways, from abducting innocent citizens, attacking serving governors and government officials, correctional facilities, amongst others. Recently, the terrorists even threatened to kidnap President Muhammadu Buhari and Kaduna State Governor Nasir Erufai. However, some members of the Senate have had enough. As a minority caucus in the Senate stage, a walk out of the chambers, protesting against the Senate President Ahmad Lawan's refusal to allow the lawmakers commence an impeachment process against President Muhammadu Buhari. The senators, who had earlier held a two-hour closed-door session, were angry that Lawan did not allow them to discuss the issue of insecurity that was deliberated upon extensively in the closed session. The senators, across party lines, later addressed journalists and gave President Buhari six weeks to end the insecurity in the country of his impeachment. Joining us on this show this morning as we discuss this threat to impeach President Muhammad Buhari is Senator Adesheye Ugunlawe, former Minister of Works and APC Chieftain, and Kunle Adegoke, a senior advocate of Nigeria. Welcome to the morning show, Senator. And um, Mr. Adegoke, thank you for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. Thank, thank you, viewers. Thank you, Dr. Abate. Thank you very much. Well, there are, you know, uh, many sides to this story. There is the political, there is the legal, and other dimensions. But we're lucky to have uh, two of you. Uh, Senator Ugunlewe, could you talk to us about the politics behind this uh, threat of impeachment? And then, uh, Mr. Adegoke, SCN, is it really possible within the stringent conditions uh, under the Constitution, Section 143 thereof. I'll start with you, Senator Gunlawa. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me. You know, uh, I was in the Senate 1999 to 2003 as a minority party, and I could recall the position of minority is to put the government straight where there are problems. So they are doing their legitimate function by asking these questions, by even working out to express their displeasure. So whatever they are doing is constitutional, it is their right to do so, but that, uh, whether they are going to be able to impeach, they may not have the number, but they've made their points and the point is clear. Okay, Mr. Adegoke. The legal implications and whether this is uh, realizable. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you, Dr. Abati. Um, the development is one that is, uh, at this particular moment, still a threat from some members of the uh, Senate. However, we cannot rule out the possibility if they are ready to walk down the whole gamut of the provisions of the Constitution relating to removal of the president uh, from office. And in this regard, we should not just say that it is not realizable if sufficient numbers of the members of the Senate and the House of Representatives becomes quite dissatisfied sufficiently with the activities of Mr. President and his conduct in office, they may be able to get him removed from office. All they need to do is to comply with the provisions of the Constitution, Section 143, specifically in this regard. It may look somewhat cumbersome. However, if they are able to get the sufficient number to commence it, it's not so much of a difficulty. So far, they have one third of the members of the National Assembly agreeing in a notice that the president has committed a particular uh, misconduct gross enough to warrant being removed from office. They will state the allegations, and with such a one-third of the members of the National Assembly, the president of the Senate will be under an obligation to give the notice to the president and also to the other members of the National Assembly, and with that, the removal proceeding would have been competently begun. So I believe that it is possible 
if they are, the members are ready to go down the line. So the Constitution says within seven days, within 14 days, within three months. So you, you're looking at at least a three month time frame, possibly longer, but it's not specific on the date. But I wanted to ask you both, and I'll start with you, sir, Senator Ogunlewe. Does the action or inaction of President Muhammadu Buhari, in your opinion, amount to gross misconduct? And also, according to Senator Abaribe, the people calling for imp impeachment is not just made up of opposition politicians, that some APC senators are with them. If partisanship is not an issue, might ethnicity or even religion be an issue in where senators vote on this matter if it comes to that? I'll start with you, Senator Ogunlewe. Thank you. Thank you very much. The, the role and conviction of um, the presiding officer, the Syrian president, is very important. If he's not convinced that the process should go ahead, he's dead on arrival. So, and he's the presiding officer. There is hardly anything, anything anybody can do over the voice or the choice of a, um, this sort of a presiding officer. So they need to do a lot of work more. Whether it is appropriate, whether it is doable, is very, very dependent on the position of the Senate President and the Speaker. you make of the fact that Senator Abaribe said that there are APC senators supporting them? If APC senators are supporting them, that means they don't care about partisan issues. But my ethnicity be a problem. How might their constituents feel? Perhaps constituents from the North, for example, Muslim constituents, can they put pressure on their senators to not support the impeachment or to support, as the case may be? It's very difficult. Well, now impossible for that to happen. Very, very difficult. I've been there before. Whatever you say on the floor of the National Assembly, is personal to you. When it comes to impeachment and not an interest, it's a different kettle of fish entirely. They will hold meetings at night and override you because they have the majority. So it is better for them to make the noise, but to make it possible. My view is that it is just it is, it is just a heroic statement, totally difficult to do, very, very. Mr. Deco, okay, your thoughts on does whether the president's actions or inactions amount to gross misconduct in the area of security and also ethnic considerations, religious considerations, if partisan considerations do not come into play here, as we're told by Senator Barry Bay? Right. I, I believe that the issue, whether the action or inaction of Mr. President will constitute gross misconduct is actually for the National Assembly to determine. In my personal opinion, I am, I am grossly dissatisfied with the performance of the government when the issue of insecurity is being discussed. We must be honest to ourselves. There is no nation that will be satisfied. There is no group of people that will be satisfied with the kind of insecurity that we have playing out in different parts of the nation today. However, we must realize that Nigeria is a funny country where all manner of primordial sentiments actually infiltrate into public discourse and actually determine how the people reason. We cannot rule out the possibility of religious considerations becoming the cornerstone of some people's thinking. We cannot rule out the possibility of tribal sentiments infiltrating into the people, way people will consider this issue, more so with the kind of people that we have at the National Assembly. I do not believe that majority of them have the capacity to really address this issue from a detached point of view, to critically consider what they were sworn in to protect, that is the security, the interests of an average Nigerian. Now that the, uh, the end is coming home to roost, that insecurity is knocking on their doors, I want to believe that they ought to allow proper reasoning to determine the way they are going to attend to this issue. It is not a question of just removing the precedent. It's a, it's, uh, the notice given out, I mean the, the warning given out. I want to believe, as, as, as we should consider it a warning, because no notice of, of removal 
has been no notice of allegation of gross misconduct has actually been issued. The, the procedure for issuing it is laid down in the constitution. There must be a specific number of the members of the Senate and members of the House of Representatives. But allowing religious or uh, tribal sentiments or some other primordial considerations to determine the way they are going to attend to this issue is just counting the number of days remaining for Nigeria to completely disintegrate. Okay, uh, I'll come to you, uh, Mr. Uh, I mean, uh, Senator Kingsley Adisha Ogunlewe, uh, and I'll ask you, what's your assessment of the Buhari administration? I'd like to know your honest assessment of the Buhari administration. That's one to you. And secondly, I also want you to tell me about your experience with the Obasanjo impeachment, you know, move in the early 2000s, I think it was 2002. What was the experience like? Because I know people like, uh, say, the Othan Zerbe were prominent there. And uh, to you, sir, uh, SEN, sir, I'd like, you know, your thoughts. A lot of people have argued that uh, laws in Section 143 that, that, you know, puts out the procedure for impeachment, you know, that, that we can fine tune it, you know, to make it better as regards to those time extensions, like those windows for three months, we wait and we wait seven days and we, this, these things can be quicker, you know, because it, it will help our democracy a whole lot better. So I'd like to know your thoughts generally as regards, you know, those laws. I'll start with you, uh, Senator, first. Uh, thank you very much. Let me share with you my experience during the uh, process of impeachment of um, President Olusegun Gwambasanjo. It was externally motivated. Some power blocks wanted him out. People, we are only 19 AD senators and AMPP also were in very bad minority. And they held meetings at night and decided to impeach uh, Olusegun Gwambasanjo. And they already have the majority, two third majority to do so. And we are in the process of consummating it on a Thursday morning. And uh, our leader, uh, Mujisulua Akifenwa, called us together to say, how do we save Olusha Gombasanjo being from the southwest of Nigeria? And we said, okay, let us abort that process on that Thursday and give us time before the next Tuesday to see how we can salvage the situation. And that was what we did. Immediately that one was done, we now sent an emissary to Chief Lucio Kumbasojo to tell him the position of things, as bad as they were, and that he should go and see the Emir of Kano, where Naba came from, and see also all the traditional rights in the southeast where uh, Senator Ayim came from, so that they can douse the tension and call their people. You know, those people in the National Assembly hardly listen more, than less to what is happening there. They consult at home very, very, very deeply. And that was what Obasanjo did. And they have to contact those external people to pipe down. And that was why he was able to escape. But if not for that you know, decision of AD people to make sure that uh, we inform him of the difficult, I mean, the position of things, he would have been impeached. So, but that is not what is happening now. The majority APC members will never allow an impeachment on the year, in the year of election. S sorry, I just want it's to get- It's a total defeat for them. I just want to get something right. So, AD was not, the president, was not the president's party. The president, was, the president was in the PDP. But because he was a fellow Yoruba man like you, the AD senators now played the tribal card in support. Can you confirm no, that to us? No, survival card. Survival, survival. Our, our contention was that if a Yoruba president is impeached, we are handicapped almost forever as Southwest people. And what do we do to salvage it? That is why we are there. You cannot see things that will endanger your person. 
and you keep quiet on the performance of um, the president, honestly, things started to wobble when the National Assembly concentrated on the military and neglected the police on the issue of security. It is the function of the police to protect the citizens within the country, not the military. But everybody shifted attention to the military, gave them more money, one billion dollars, this one, neglecting the, the police. The police has the structure to prevent or to protect Nigerians. How many police stations do we have in Nigeria? How many DPOs do we have? How many IGP? How many, you know, uh, in communities? So that's why they can report any form of breach of security. If you notice people going on bicycle now, motorbicycle, and they are in hundreds, and you want to report, are you going to go to the military barrack to report or to go to the nearby police station? But the police stations are not functioning. They don't have equipment. They don't have services. They don't have buses. They don't have vehicles. They don't have uniforms. And you want them to perform this duty. We have shifted responsibility to the military too much. We must go back to the police. The police have the pole. They are a lot more efficient than the military. I have witnessed it. They are trained to combat all these things. If in the next six months we revert back to the police, Nigeria will not be the, the, way, the, the, the way we are now. Because the police, they are in every community to attack this, in, uh, so, this insurgency. My question is, the you is will you say... But the military is not in a position to do so. Would you say How the, many military barracks do we have in the country? Okay, so would you say the APC government has failed in terms of securing the country? No, 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 no. It's not a government matter. It is structure that I'm talking about. How did it happen? They will not plan to fail. But the concentration on the military... That is the result we are seeing. Any government that doesn't read the constitution well, including members of the National Assembly, to know that securing the, the internal security is the, the police, not the military. Don't give military money to secure the country. It's when you have an external uh, okay, because, um, because I attack need to, I need that the military to, should get involved. Because I need to go to the legal silk. So who do we blame? The president or the National Assembly? Who are you blaming now? Has the president failed in the National of Assembly? So the National Assembly is the problem, not the, the National president. Assembly. When they were proposing funds for the military, you should have asked for what purpose? Is it to aggression? If it is the country, it is the police. Let's just give money to this police. Okay, so for you, honestly, police are a lot more efficient in internal security. Okay. They have the structure to do so. Okay. The military doesn't have the structure. Oh, okay, legal sake, I'm sure you want to respond to what he said just now. Uh, he says we shouldn't blame the president for the insecurity in the country. W what's your response to that? And also, the question I ask that, uh, is there a way we can make the laws faster enough to ensure that impeachment proceedings go quicker? Well, I, I do not think uh, it is right to put the blame at the doorstep of the National Assembly in this instance. There is no way you leave the head and be blaming the neck for what is going wrong in the thinking process of a human being. I believe that the president has fallen below her. He hasn't uh, performed well enough. We elected Mr. President in the belief that as a former uh, general in the army, as somebody who had led this country before, that he had a solution to the insecurity challenges that we were having under President Jonathan. Uh, we all trooped out. I was among those who trooped out against President Jonathan when the, the students in the northern uh, state of Bruno were abducted. And if, as of today, we are talking about this problem in a grosser dimension, Definitely, it would be mischievous for me to join the group of those people that will be giving Mr. President a pass mark and be condemning someone else. The president, the buck, stops at the president's table. If there is a challenge confronting him, 
making it impossible for him to perform his duty. This ought to have been made known to Nigerians. We all invested so much in his becoming the president the first time, the second time. No matter who voted for him, who did not vote for him, the fact that he emerged president of this nation the first time and the second time means that Nigerians invested their expectations, their, their, their hopes in his regime. And as at this moment, if we are still talking about the uh, Boko Haram terrorists, bandits, and what have you, invading Abuja and knocking on the door of Mr. President that we are coming to abduct you, definitely that government cannot be said to have performed well. It is a failed government. That is my verdict as far as President Muhammad Bari is concerned. I am a member and a leader of action of, uh, of uh, APC in my own right, uh, but I do not think that we should reduce everything to politics. We must be honest to ourselves. If my children were the ones abducted, if my wife was the one being violated, if my family members were the ones that are being attacked, if I'm the one subjected to, 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 to threat of death on a daily basis along the roads of Makodi or in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in uh, Adamawa, in Yola, everywhere in the part, these different parts of the country, would I be comfortable to still give pass mark to somebody elected to guarantee my security, guarantee the security of the members of my family. So far, it has not affected us so much in Lagos. Does not mean that we should close our eyes to what is happening to other people in different parts of the country. I wanted to go and visit my friends in Kaduna. I don't have the courage to go. It's not a question of being lily livered. It's a question of self-interest. Now, I must protect myself. I must be afraid to go to different, I, I should not be afraid to go to any part of Nigeria if security Security had been properly guaranteed. If these are the things that we condemn the government of uh, President Jonathan for, and under our own party's leadership, we have not been able to achieve it, let us be honest to ourselves. Whoever ought to resign should resign and get out of office and allow somebody else to do the work. If the person is not ready to resign, then he must tighten his belt. He must be ready to do the work better. During the days of President Shehu Shagari, if you could remember, when we were ag agitating, that there were crises in different parts of Nigeria and that uh, the economy was going down the drain and so many other things like that. President Shehu Shagari uh, with his uh, Benson and Edges, uh, stick of cigarette in one hand and a ticket to China or India or somewhere else on the other. We are condemning him that look what kind of irresponsible president is this? And we have a similar situation playing out with our president jetting all over the nation, sightseeing, moonlighting at every slightest opportunity. I don't think that is a proper government that we deserve in Nigeria or in any part of the world, in any civilized community. That is on one hand. Now, with respect to maybe the number of days that this, uh, the, the, uh, the threatened uh, removal, I don't like using the word impeachment. What we have in Nigeria is not impeachment. We have removal from office. That is what our constitution has provided for. We must be properly guided. Impeachment under the American constitution is a criminal proceeding in which a quasi-judicial body is sitting to interrogate allegations made against a public officer. In Nigeria, we are not talking about this kind of a proceeding here. It may have some elements of criminal proceeding. However, it is clear, it is clear that what we have is what we call removal proceeding. It is not the same thing as what obtains under the American Constitution. This was pointed out, and lawyers should not be falling into this error. This was pointed out by Nikitobi GSC of Blessed Memory in the case of Inokuju and Adeleke, that what we have in Nigeria is a removal proceeding. Now, uh, the timeline given by the Constitution, I don't believe that it is a mistake. It has a reason. One of the reasons is that if you look at the dates, the number of days required to do one thing or the other, is to ensure that justice of uh, what is required as justice of the procedure is actually attained. Because what the court can question, the court of law can question what is done by the National Assembly together with the CJN, together with the, uh, with, with the panel, with a panel set up by the CJN to investigate the allegation made against the court. It is court. Hello, no, we can hear you. Please go we ahead. Mr. Degoke. Okay, as Senator Ogunlewe, while we're trying to re-establish connection with Adegoke SN, uh, let me ask you this. 
What do you make of the reactions uh, from presidential spokespersons and the Minister of Information? The Minister of Information says the attempt to remove the president from office is laughable and there is nothing but propaganda. Uh, Femi Additional says so, oh, the people want to remove the president, that they are anarchists and that uh, they are, you know, ploy, we will not go anywhere. Um, Garu Bashir says, uh, what these uh, senators are trying to do, the lawmakers are trying to do, is uh, babyish and performative. Uh, do you think that uh, their grievances can just be so uh, cavalierly uh, dismissed? Uh, thank you very much. The three of them are doing their jobs. Nobody is going to expect them to criticize openly the government they are serving. It is, uh, the, what the, the responses they are giving is quite appropriate. At the back, they may have reservation. They will discuss with their principal very, very thoroughly. But that is not what we are hearing you know, on, on television and radio. And I, I credit them. That is the way they, are, they must do. That is their job. They must manage the situation. They must have a damage control. They cannot openly criticize the government they are serving. It is very difficult. Although, when they get back home, they can be critical. They can be objective. But when you are coming to report about your principal, it is not objectivity that matters. It is wisdom. And they are wise. And I commend them. Well, these uh, lawmakers, they blame the president because, as uh, Tundum pointed out earlier on, the buck stops at his desk. But your candidate, uh, the uh, APC presidential candidate, uh, Bola Ahmed uh, Tinubu, uh, whom you have been uh, promoting and uh, defending uh, on this program particularly, do you have any idea what he intends to do uh, if he wins about uh, you know, this challenge of uh, insecurity in Nigeria? Because he hasn't said much by way of a program. Thank you very much. President Buhari is a military person. It's believed that there has been this competition between the military and the police for a long time. And because he's a military person, he, he, he seems to rely more on the military. If I were to advise the next president of Nigeria, that's Bola Ahmed Tunubu. He's, pre he's the president in waiting. Just let us accept that. He has won that election. So yes. let us now say... Even before the election, do, Chief. Revert back to the police. The police must be involved in internal security. My brother's SAN was referring to Mr. President as the ultimate. Fine. But they didn't vote for Mr. President alone. The communities where these killings are happening voted for members of the National Assembly. They know him. They don't see Buhari. They see their senators. They see their members of the House of Rep. And the police in this community, the military, they are not in, the, in this community. In, in this community that he can discuss with on the security of the community. But the man is handicapped. He has no weapon. He has no equipment. He has no radio. He has no, you know, Nothing to, 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 to work with. Then you now refer to the, the, the military. That is far, far, far off. So, yes, the president is the, is the commander in chief. But the commander of the people are the members of the National Assembly. Those are the people that go to the community. The president doesn't go. The only thing the president should say is to inform Nigeria of what he's doing. Have a live broadcast, you know, appeal to people to calm down that you are in control. But to keep quiet is not the best thing to do. Right. Thank you, sir. There's a reason why I refer to ethnic and religious considerations, and that was precisely what you have shared with us now, those factors underpinning the AD support of a PDP president at the time, um, President Olusegun Obasanjo. But I'm starting with you again, Senator Ogunlewe. Do you think that that issue, because when we refer to historical examples, we always have to give context. The times were completely different, and so is the situation. The issue then with President Obasanjo, as he then was, and now that Nigeria is facing an existential crisis, are quite different. Might that make any difference? This is for you, Senator Ogunlewe. Then I'll ask you your question, Mr. Odegoke. 
Well, the situation at that time is not the same thing as now. Things have gone so bad, very, very bad. And believe it or not, with the cooperation of the National Assembly at that time, President Obasanjo was at on, the, on top of everything. There was um, these people in, in, in the Yoruba land under Adams and, and, and Fashion. And they were OPC. And they were disturbing the system. And President Obasanjo called um, Smith, the IGP at that time, that these people must be, not be allowed to fester. And they were crushed. Ad Ghani Adams, Fashion, were imprisoned for a long time. And that, quell that, that sort of um, insurgency, it would have been worse than now. So what I'm saying is that the police is in a better position to handle the internal security. Far, far better than the, uh, than the military. They have the structure. They have the training. Military training does not involve human relations. It is shoot and kill. They don't have people living in the community who, that can inform them. Parts of the community are closer to the police than the military. We are always afraid of the military. We can't give them information because they don't even understand what you are saying. So there is a different scenario now. Things are getting bad. My mind, we should go back to the police and ask them how to solve this problem. You can see the, 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 the position of the police. They've kept quiet as if it is not of their business. This is a security matter. They will not talk. They will not give any, any, any opinion on security or kidnapping or whatever you are saying. Are you not, are, 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 are you not afraid when the police is keeping quiet on security, internal security? And it is the military that is talking. It is strange to me. And General Aruna mentioned it on television that let us go back to the police. Police has the structure. They have, they will, they will, this thing we are talking will not take them six months to handle because they are community based people. A military man is not your friend, a policeman is your friend. You can give him information, he can come to the I mean, paper two joint to ask questions and relate with you and sit down with you. They have CID when we were younger. People that move around to collect information. But the military is not trained to. Thank you, sir. Mr. Adekoke, okay, what do you no make matter. of the senator's point about the police? Because you were trying to distinguish earlier between impeachment and removal from office. Do we need a constitutional amendment to strengthen the police? Do we need more funding? What exactly do we need with regards to strengthening the police and solving the problem underlining this impeachment saga? Well, the, uh, the, the, uh, the removal uh, issue is not, I don't think it's a question of uh, funding. If the, if, the, if the National Assembly members are of the opinion that the president has committed uh, an offense which amounts to gross misconduct in this instance, I believe that it is just a legislative uh, proceeding by which there will be a judicial intervention and ultimately and finally, uh, a legislative determination of the issue, which has a quasi-judicial uh, character in any case. However, where uh, the issue of insecurity, that is the one that is burning the country right now, is uh, being looked at from the perspective of the performance of the security agencies uh, who are supposed to be the ones uh, actually being on the battlefield. Uh, I believe that there was a time that they were, were agitating on the question of uh, lack of provision of sufficient funding to procure arms and what have you. And at the time, that was ultimately resolved. We heard of arms procured being imported into the country, all manner of uh, death fighters and what have you. However, I believe that there is a bigger problem in this particular situation now. The security architecture in Nigeria needs a total overhauling. And this is where the president has a major role to play. If we look at what is happening within the army, we've heard of instances where they will say a particular location is being attacked, and shortly before the attack, the army was withdrawn. The police was withdrawn. Then who is giving this command? Who is the person responsible 
for this kind of decisions that will expose Nigerians to dangerous attacks by terrorists. And where we, we, where we find a situation where that, that nothing has been done, practically, with respect to the person or whoever was giving such commands, then the president has a blame to bear in that instance. If you look at it, we have not heard of S ruling maybe in the army or in the police or in any other security agency that ought to be resolved. The Kujay prison was attacked recently by these terrorists. Until now, we just we don't even know the, num the specific number of persons actually abducted from the prison that were set free and what have you. And it's, Nigeria is a nation where life doesn't seem to, to really count. We don't even have statistics of the specific number of persons dying on a particular occasion or on a daily basis. And to this extent, we, uh, we, we, we have left everything as if it is only God that will just come and solve the problem for us. If it is, let us probably do another election where we will say, okay, we have elected God as our president and we don't need a human president anymore if we cannot blame the president. So I believe that there is a rational, there is a, a fundamental uh, a good thinking in apportioning the blame to the president who ought to do more in this instance than what, what, than what he is doing right now. In the army, in the police, and what have you, with all manner of things that we see all around, and we don't see, people are not being fired. Nobody is being relieved of his responsibility, and we still believe that everything is okay. Maybe by the time we are personally affected, we will know that things are not okay. Then with respect to the earlier issue of uh, the number of days and what have you, I was trying to make a distinction with respect to this. If we look at the time allowed the panel, three, a period of three months, which may be 90 days, 91 days or so, if we look at that period, we may say that, okay, it's relatively too long. However, it shouldn't be reduced to seven days or 14 days, just like the procedure required of the National Assembly in serving a notice or in uh, commencing the uh, removal proceeding. For the panel, Okay. To be set up by the CJN, probably a period of 45 days should be su sufficient. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, real quickly, we've got just 30 seconds. Uh, uh, Senator, sir, I'd like to ask you, you're so confident, like you said, that the APC candidate is going to win. Uh, you said we should even call him president already, which a lot of people said, no, elections have not been conducted yet. Uh, people would like to ask you that, on what record will the APC campaign on? Since you said here yeah, yourself that there are failings as regards insecurity and the economy in general. Okay, you didn't say the economy, but as regards insecurity, on what record would the APC campaign on 30 seconds? On what record? The question we will ask is what do you want to do? Not what somebody else have done. A new king is going to rule in Egypt who does not know Joseph. And that's our slogan, we are new. We are going to bring in so many new things. We are not going to refer too much to the past. I'm telling you, we will empower the police more. We will build more police stations, more bo bo police barracks, because they are closer to the community. We will encourage state police. Okay, Senator, so, that so, so you're saying... The East state will be able to manage okay, their okay. security. Senator, so you're saying... It is saying what you're bringing on, on, on board that so is you're, important. You're, you're saying that... Not Bola what somebody else has done. Okay, so you're saying Bola Tinubu will not campaign on Buhari's record and the APC will not campaign on President Buhari's record. That's what you're saying. Because you're not proud of the record. Is that what I'm you're saying? I'm talking about my own. If I want to tell people, vote for Bola Tinubu, what will I be telling them? I'm not record going to be APC. telling them about Buhari because Buhari is not contesting. Okay, thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you.